were in your fourth, you were in your fourth term? I was 15, in my term. 15, 15 years? years. Okay, all right, about the same as mine. Um, it's 14 and a half. Um, share with us a little bit the thought process you went through to decide mm -hmm. this is what I want to do now and run for mayor. So, so thank you um, for that question. Um, you know, after the health uh, situation and, and my being focused, I was very clear after my last election, you know, I ran four times, didn't get party support, beat the party anyway, because I keep saying I'm gonna make this party better against their own will. Um, having chaired the Appropriations Committee over the last six years, really growing frustrated with hearing what people say is important and then watching how they invest the money. And looking at some of the structural issues that were there and looking at, um, I used to call the budget process the Hunger Games <laughs> because commissioners were forced to plan for a budget that they had, not for what the city needed, right? And you're, so you're constantly talking about stuff is, I go back to the potholes because I'm the pothole and policy girl. When you ask the streets commissioner, how many potholes do we have and does your budget cover all the potholes? And the commissioner says, can I call you? Because we know we didn't, right? It's the stuff, it, that kind of stuff, right? Um, you know, having a mayor come in and say, we're gonna do zero-based budgeting, we went from program budgeting to performance-based budgeting, and me trying to manage that process as ch of chair of appropriations, saying, folks, who, what are our values, right? A budget is a moral document. What is the public safety plan for every department? What's our anti-poverty plan for every department? What is our inclusionary plan for every department? So with all of the power that you know goes with the chairmanship of appropriations, and we did good stuff, we, the public-private partnership, the promise, the poverty plan with United Way and others, but it wasn't enough, it's not transformative enough. Mm -hmm. um, and COVID for me just really um, demonstrated that when we make bad policy decisions, people die. What are your three most important goals and how will you accomplish them? So again, I, I want to go back to zero-based budgeting. I want to transform city government where every single city department has an anti-poverty plan and looks at how it supports, right, um, communities that have um, not had the investment, right, so that we can readdress. Because people talk about equity moving forward. And it's like, you can't move forward because you're still not equitable. Like, you have to readdress some of those issues. I, so I want them to prioritize it. I want every department to lead on public safety, citywide camera program, appropriate lighting, all of those things. And I want a serious inclusion and economic uh, opportunity plan for every department, how we contract with folks. Look, again, you know, I've said this in other, or other places, we have departments um, that have the same contractors, right? They have a shore town. They go up, they go to the shore in the summer and they decide how much they're gonna charge us in the fall when they come to bid. We gotta break that up. So my priority is departments that, whose value system is anti-poverty, uh, public safety, and inclusion and economic opportunity for all. So You've talked about your district, and we know that it is both quite diverse and challenging. But because we have blunt conversations, um, I mean, I think it's fair to say that parts, certainly of Kensington, are just a mess. And so how do you explain to the public, I was a district council person for 15 years. This is what's going on here. But I'm not only going to fix this, but I'm also going to take care of, in essence, the other nine districts, because you know we have ten, right? So how do you how do you explain that? So Kensington is a creation of bad policy um, with a containment strategy that hasn't worked, 
and the lack of leadership to say this is unacceptable anywhere, right? That's what Kensington folks want to hear. I went to high school at Mass Bomb, so I'm not going to sit here and tell you there weren't drugs in Kensington, because I cut school in Kensington enough to know there was always been drugs in Kensington. But the level of lawlessness that we've allowed, and then in the name of harm reduction, we have allowed people to live on the streets of Kensington in an undignified way. So what would you do? So we have a 14-page plan that we did, which was called Restore Kensington. Because one of the things that Council Member Scuola and I were the most frustrated about is that ultimately it didn't matter how much money we would put in and invest in Kensington if the policies didn't follow. So what are the policies? People living in tents, there's no dignity in it, right? Getting people out of those encampments is hugely important. So that is important. You're going to move them? Treatment. You're going to move them? I am going to, we've identified who they are, and I really believe that most of those folks have families that would help us. We need a family reunification plan. Some people are out there because of their trauma that do need housing. And so we got to move them to those to housing opportunities that are real, that they can sustain as they transition. We need to transition our mental health system. We now have drugs that our drug and alcohol system cannot handle. Track, fentanyl, and other things have changed the game. And we still have barriers to access. I have an uncle who is in recovery. And when he wanted to go to recovery, he says, I need a nine-month program, and I want to leave the city. And I knew the Secretary of Health at the state, and I couldn't get him into a program. So we need to change the programs to really wrap around and be prepared to uh, provide um, the dignified services that, that, they, that they need. And then we need enforcement. Mm -hmm. We need enforce. We have to say it is not okay in Kensington. And Kensington is a creation of... It can't happen in South Philly. It can't happen in the Northeast. So what do we have? It's called a bad containment strategy. The only person who can make those policy decisions is the mayor. So on the one hand, you are proudly known as a fighter. Didn't know about you and your brothers. Um, great quality in a mayor. Um, but how do you balance? Can't fight with everybody. And at some point, how do you make that transition as a unifier to bring people together and lead this city? So, <clears throat> I always get this wrong. It's like, do I pick my enemies wisely? Something like that? Sometimes. I always get it wrong. My husband gets yeah, mad at me because I always get it wrong. They usually pick um, me. <laughs> <laughs> there, look, I got elected on an agenda that was anti-corruption, clearly wanting to be a disruptor. Um, so advocating strongly is something that I would do. But every piece of legislation I passed was 17 and one, was in zero. Like I know how to build consensus, right? I also know that the legislation that is good for, for my district was good for the city. Every piece that we did, BERT reform, the land bank, it was always thinking about, yes, how does this help th this constituency but helps others? And I'm a process person. I believe in dialogue. So there are some people who have exploited the system that I'm OK with them never liking me. Well, I hear you. Um, as you well know, often a lot easier to get 17-0, uh, 16-1 when you're a member. A little different when you leave the fourth floor, go to the second floor. You might have that experience. Um, you want me to respond to that? Because I've talked to all the living mayors about this over and over again. So Sure. <laughs> we have more than virtually any other city in America. I will, so. I will say to you, in my chairmanship of appropriations, I've gotten an opportunity to spend time with my colleagues, and I know what's important to them. Mm -hmm. um, and I will treat them as independent elected officials and respect and value what is important to them and who has elected them. And creating a common vision doesn't mean that should come into conflict. So I know there's always this debate. People from the fourth floor don't know how to act on the second floor. <laughs> I'm going to act right. Okay. Good, good, uh, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so I've got 
two and a half. I'm going to do a lightning round of two questions. So it'll be really easy. Um, I have this very firm belief that there are, there are a lot of critical players in public safety, but there are four, in my opinion, that drive what happens. The mayor, the police commissioner, the DA, and the courts. We'd have to say, it seems to be a fair amount of either disconnect, possibly dysfunction in that regard. How do you fix that? So my public um, safety plan, which is on our website and you should read, um, calls for a, a public safety dashboard. Because I agree with you, the only place where I would say it's an and is at the public defender's office. When people enter our system, because look, we know the next shooter and we know the next victim. We already failed them. We failed them in our public schools. We failed them when they entered the juvenile system and we didn't wrap ourselves around them, right? So my belief is at the public defender's office, we have an opportunity with families to really find out what is going on. And they are a place where if we wrapped ourselves and provided the right interventions, we can move forward. Um, well, so a public, but a public safety dashboard, right. people need to understand best practices. What are caseloads in the public defender's office? What are caseloads in the parole office? Why don't we have more people in house arrest and daily reporting systems, right? Like you can then hold everybody accountable. Mm -hmm. The criminal justice advisory board um, is a discussion that I would lead as mayor. Mm -hmm. Because all of those form part of a very expensive, which is now close to 30% of our budget, mm -hmm. is in that portfolio. Yep. And they need to be held public, publicly accountable, judges and, and, the, and the district attorney and everyone. Okay. Lightning round, 35 seconds, 30 mm -hmm. seconds. Greatest accomplishment, greatest disappointment so my in greatest, public service. In public service, my, my greatest uh, uh, accomplishment has been looking at fairness and equity from my lived experience and knowing that I can do right by the most vulnerable and still grow and, and get folks to, to comply. Um, my biggest disappointment is you can legislate with the best intentions and some bureaucrat will take it and mess it up. Or a colleague. Compromise, yes. <laughs> <laughs> or a colleague. <laughs>